we are looking at theories developed after the HOS model, which I've called modern theories. In the last lecture video, I distinguished between what are internal economies of scale and what are external economies of scale. And also in the last video, I discussed in detail the implications of the concept of increasing returns to scale or economies of scale. A quick recap of what we have learned about economies of scale. This is also called in internal economies of scale or simply increasing returns to scale or IRS. What this means is if a firm doubles all its, all its inputs, then the output more than doubles. And this happens because total factor productivity increases as a firm in produces more and more output. So when we have economies of scale in such a case, the long run average cost falls as the firm produces more and more outputs. And this may happen because you have a large initial investment. Now let us look at the large commercial aircraft industry. Way back in 1950s or 60s, the US dominated the world market in terms of production of large commercial aircrafts. And since US was the first country to produce large commercial aircrafts, it produced a large quantity of aircrafts and at a very low average cost of production. But the output they produced was very large and perhaps the US had about 95% of the world market. So US was the exporter of large commercial aircrafts and other countries in the world were importers of large commercial aircraft. Now in 1960s, two countries in Europe, the UK and France, they decided to collaborate and come up with a company called Airbus. Now in 1960s, when they started initially, they would have produced very low level of output. And when you produce very low level of output, what happens? Your average cost of production will be very high. Now look at this from the perspective of world buyers. Here we have the US, which, has, which is selling you a large commercial aircraft at a very low price relative to Airbus. And then because US has been in the market for quite some time, people know about the reliability and how safe the aircrafts are. So when Airbus decides to enter, initially it might be able to sell very few aircrafts and and this should must be at a very high price. So no one would be interested in buying large commercial aircrafts from Europe or from this company called Airbus. So what UK and France started to do is they started to subsidize big time the production of large commercial aircrafts. These governments invested a lot of money into production of large commercial aircrafts. And so slowly as they produced more and because the government was subsidizing the selling of large commercial aircrafts in Europe, they could charge a price closer to what the US was charging simply because of the government intervention. So as, as Airbus starts to produce more and more and sell more and more, what happens? The average cost of production starts to decline. And as average product cost of production starts to decline, the government has to subsidize it less and less. Look at the situation today. Way back in 1950s or 60s, US dominated the world market. It was supplying about 95% of large commercial aircrafts to the world. And by 1980s, 1990s and 2000, look at the situation today. Because of this 
active government intervention in France and UK where they subsidize selling of these aircraft. Now, the world market is almost equally shared between Airbus and the US company Boeing. And so they have a roughly 50-50% of market. So now we have two leading exporters of large commercial aircraft and, and the rest of the countries are importers of large commercial aircraft. Now look at the following. We have countries like Russia, China and India which have the technical manpower to produce large commercial aircraft and one of the reasons why they are reluctant to produce them is because when they enter the market it will be very hard for them to sell the aircraft. Why? Because the average cost of production will be higher and why so? Because in large commercial aircrafts what we have is increasing returns to scale spread over a very large amount of output. So to enter into the industry it requires active intervention by the government and it also requires very large investments. So that is why as of now we just have two major producers of large commercial aircraft, Boeing being one company and the other one being Airbus. Now let us look at another model which looks at international trade and increasing returns to scale. These are the assumptions we make. There are two countries and they are identical in every respect in terms of production, technology and consumer preferences. Each country produces and consumes two products, let's call them X and Y in autarky. And both products are subject to increasing returns to scale or economies of scale. So when both industries are subject to increasing returns to scale or economies of scale. What we have is a decreasing cost PPC or this red colored PPC which is convex to the origin. And since both countries are exactly the same, so they face the same PPC. They have same community indifference curves represented by the green one and A represents the equilibrium in autarky in each of the two countries. Based on this we know each country will produce 30 units of X and 30 units of Y. Now these countries decide to engage in foreign trade and so these countries now face this world price which is depicted by this bold black line and Wherever we have the point of tangency between the world price and the community indifference curve, we have consumption equilibrium. What about production equilibrium? For example, one of the countries decides to devote all its resources to production of X. How much X will it produce? It will be 100. What about the other country? Suppose it decides to devote all its resources to the production of Y. How much Y would it produce? 100 units. So each of these countries will produce 100 units of X and 100 units of Y. Country A will produce 100 units of X. Country B will produce 100 units of Y. Which country chooses to produce what? This is very difficult or it's impossible for theory to explain that. This could simply be a historical accident. Then we know F represents consumption equilibrium. So based on this, we know 50 units of this good X will be consumed in each of the two countries. And the same thing applies to Y. So we know how much will be produced of X, say, in country A. How much of it will be consumed in country A. Based on this, we can figure out the exports of country A. We can do the similar thing for the other country, country B. So this is how we would explain foreign trade when we have decreasing cost PP. Some important points to note when we have increasing returns to scale. Number one, which country becomes the first entrant into the market or which country produces what? The theory cannot explain this. This may simply be a historical accident. Number two, it is not necessary that two countries are exactly identical in every respect. 
for this kind of trade to take place. The third thing you should notice, if economies of scale persist over a long range of output, one of few firms will capture the entire market, giving rise to market conditions such as monopoly or oligopoly. Let us look at one of the hypotheses associated with this. It's called the Linda hypothesis. Linda was a Swedish economist and he believed a nation exports those manufactured goods for which a large domestic market exists or these products appeal to majority of the population. Now if you start producing the product which satisfies majority of the population and as you produce more and more you become more and more efficient and you may face in internal economies of scale or increasing returns to scale. So as you become efficient, now you are in a position to export this product to other countries and though particularly those countries where this product satisfies the demand for minority of its population. Now this is a hypothesis and just look at the example of beef. US is a major beef producer and consumer and US is also one of the largest exporters of beef. Why? Because beef industry has cropped up simply to satisfy large domestic demand and when it does that it becomes more efficient and so is in a position to export this product but then you look at the example of artificial christmas trees most of these come from china and we know china is not a christian dominated country so this hypothesis, though confirmed for Sweden, is not confirmed for other nations and hence it is called a hypothesis. Now let us look at external economies of scale. And here, as the size of an industry increases, a firm within that industry may experience a fall in its average cost of production. What do we mean by an industry? It's a collection of firms which produce same or similar product and these are located in a well-defined geographical region. So when we have larger and geographically concentrated industry, it is likely that we'll have specialized pool of labor within that particular geographical area and also other services. So when you have these available, this can lead to higher productivity and lower cost and there are numerous examples of this look at the case of silicon valley which is a hub for technology firms and then you also have schools like stanford and uc berkeley which can provide talented workers so if a company needs workers they can find them locally so it brings down the hiring cost if they have a technical problem they can always discuss it with people available locally and once again that brings down average cost of production. In a similar way, you could look at the Wall Street firms located in New York or the financial industry located in New York, or look at Switzerland, which produces quality watches. So when we have external economies of scale, for example, because Silicon Valley has already been established, in such a case, they have what is called a first mover advantage, that is, once Silicon Valley has been established and it has been there for some time, it becomes very difficult for other countries to enter the market because it will take a very long time to get the results like you would get out of Silicon Valley. So this completes our discussion of internal and external economies of scale. Thank you for your time.